This episode of Studio Wiring Pro, I'm gonna be dealing with the D-Sub connector. The DB25 connector has many uses, but has become a common multi-channel connector for both digital and analog audio. When choosing DB25 connector, sometimes the connector is sold with the shells and sometimes it's sold separately. Um, both these connectors I'm showing you here are gold plated. It's hard to see the blue one, the pins are made out of stamped metal, but the white one, the pins are made out of solid metal. That's a better connector, but you know, sometimes you just don't have that much money and you got to go with what you can afford. So that would be the gold connector with the plastic shell or this less expensive metal shell. I would avoid using the plastic shell if possible and I definitely wouldn't use it on a mic line. Um, these metal shells are used a lot in studios, are usually sold separately, and they're very good quality. But you know, they can run up to a few dollars, five dollars a piece. And this one here, which I'll show you a link to beneath uh, the video, is my favorite because this type of shell has a large cable inlet that will accommodate the outside jacket of an eight pair cable, which makes things pretty nice and neat. Those are really nice shells. Unfortunately, the jack screws on these connectors do come in different types. There's the American 440 Imperial and there's the metric. Now, I can't say for sure what any particular device is. In the United States, I believe that the Avid American HDIO is, is a 440, but I don't know if it changes depending on what country you're in. So you should check and see if your screw is metric or if it's an Imperial 440 on your device. There are different wiring standards for the D-Sub. In this video, I'm gonna show you the Tascam analog standard, which is the most common and used on many patch bays and audio interfaces. When the DB25 connector is used as the digital audio connector, it can have four stereo inputs and four stereo outputs on a single connector, or eight stereo inputs on a single connector, or eight stereo outputs on a single connector. If you're making a digital cable, be sure to use AES specified 110 ohm cable. Before you wire a D-sub, whether it be for digital or analog, take a look at your owner's manual and make sure you know what the pinout is. Prepping the wires to wire a D-sub is very similar to prepping the wires for an XLR. So go back and take a look at, I believe it was episode three which I covered wiring an XLR connector if you wanna see this in detail. I'm gonna move through this today pretty quickly and if you need to see some more specifics, go back and take a look at wiring the XLR. I wanna cut a little extra jacket off here. Again, use the razor blade. Don't cut all the way through. Cut that back. When I'm soldering multi-channel connectors like D-subs or Elcos, it's really important that each individual channel is cut to the proper length. If all channels are cut to the same length, the job will usually be a little messy. With D-subs, I do this by putting the wires in numerical sequence in the vise, then cutting them all off even. This will make the outside channels slightly longer than the inner channels, and that will make for a neat job. Okay, now looking at the D-sub connector on the, on the Tascam layout, it's really quite simple. You skip this pin here and it's ground, low, high, ground, low, high, ground, low, high, ground, low, high, and it goes that way all the way through the connectors. On the Yamaha pinnings and some of the other ones that you'll see is that this, these will be all grounds and these will be all signal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin all these connectors and by the way, the digital wiring is basically the same as the analog on the Tascam AES. You have to use a different type of wire, but what this is, this becomes channel one is digital in one, two, channel two is digital in three, four, channel three is digital in five, six, channel four is digital in seven, eight, and then channel five is digital out one, two, channel six, digital out, 
three, four, etc., etc., etc. So now let me see if I can tin these. It's really critical on D subs how much solder you put in to tin it. Uh, sometimes with the lights on the camera, it doesn't really show that well, or it looks kind of worse than it is. And again, this is going to be tack soldering, in that I'm just going to really heat the connector and then join the tinned wire onto the D sub. On the DB25, when you're tinning the connector, you want to just slightly underfill the cups to keep the connector neat. And see why I like this vise. Very handy for getting the connector exactly where you want it. When wiring multi-channel connectors, I like to make a template with artist tape so everything I cut will be the same size. I want to strip all channels the same amount even though they're different lengths. On multi-channel Megami, I cut off the copper shield, leaving only the single drain wire or ground wire. That later I'll cover with Teflon tubing. Some people like to put shrink tubing on the ground or the shield. That's fine. I just think Teflon's a little bit neater. Remember to put the outer jacket shrink tubing on before you start to wire the connector. Again, I mark on my template the length to cut the Teflon tubing to cover the drain wire. The trick to neat wiring is consistency. I prefer to cut the Teflon tubing and shrink tubing with a razor blade. It makes for a less ragged edge. Now, if you have a lot of these to do, this type of stripper is really great because it can do a very precise, you set the guide on here, and it will set a very precise amount of wire to strip. I don't want to strip much wire for this D-sub, so that's really pretty good. Let me make it a little bit bigger, just a little, one tick bigger. But um, if you have a bunch of wiring to do, and you're using like this thin Megami, I really highly recommend that you look into getting one of these strippers because they just make it really effortless. I'm doing the stripping first before I apply the Teflon to the other wires and the shrink because I figure I'll probably beat them up in the process. Now you can use regular strippers to do this, but like I said, when I've got a bunch of these to do, I really like to use this type of stripper, which makes life a lot easier. If you've got a wire hole studio, that's what you're going to want to use. Again, if you look at these, 
it's hard to see, but I'm really removing a very small amount of insulation because those D sub cups are really tiny. What's nice about this type of stripper is not only does it cut a consistent length when you're stripping the wire, but this Megami wire is very thin, it's 26 gauge. And these strippers, the good ones, don't cut through and damage the wire. So it's very easy to quickly strip a lot of wires without worrying about damaging the wire. Now, the downside of this type of stripper is, and I'll put some links below to a few options, these are expensive. This stripper, I think, is $80 to $100. You can get replacement tips for them, but the replacement tips can be quite expensive as well. Now, I did see this on Amazon, and it's a under $20 knockoff of that stripper. I can't say I wholeheartedly recommend it. When I first tried it, it actually cut through the wire, which defeats the whole purpose of using one of these. But I did get it to work. There will be a link below, but I don't recommend it. I was able to adjust the spring tension here to stop it from cutting through the cable. If you're on a budget and you got a bunch of these thin wires to strip, then you might want to try it, but it doesn't come with a wholehearted recommendation from me. Here I'll do a couple with my standard strippers. This requires a really light touch. I can just barely feel myself cutting that insulation. Just barely feel it. Cut too far, you're going to be upset because you're going to have to redo everything. The next step is to apply a small amount of solder to the wires or tin the wires. With the drain wire, sometimes it's easier to tin the wire after putting on the Teflon or shrink tubing because it can be a little tough to slide it on. In this case, the Megami wire is 25 gauge and my Teflon is 22 gauge, so the Teflon will fit just fine even after tinning. Now I'm going to add the individual channel shrink tubing to hold the Teflon tubing on the ground or drain wire. Now that I have all the wires prepped, it's time to solder the DB25 connector. It's really hard to film close up and 
show you at the same time. So I'm going to go back and very carefully show you how to connect one set of wires. So the first thing I do is put the shrink tubing for each pin over the wires. This row here, what I'm showing you is it's, it's going to be ground, low, high. So I'm just going to put the shrink for ground and high on because I'm going to solder those two connections first. Bend this out of the way. It's really important to get the wires lined up exactly where you want them before you solder and to keep the shrink out of the way. So I got that lined up nicely. I'm just going to put that on there, give it a good heat melt and let it cool and hold the shrink out of the way. If the shrink gets near the joint that you're soldering, it's going to start to shrink and be hard to get over the pin. Okay, so that is ground and next I'm doing high because ground and high are both on this side. Again, get the low out of the way, get the shrink out of the way. Bend the wire so it's ready to go exactly where I want it which can be a pain in the neck sometimes. It takes a few tries sometimes to bend the wire just where you want it. I don't like using needle nose on this because it can put like a, a melt like a divot in the wire. So there, I got that guy where I want it. And now I'm just gonna bring the iron in and tack solder it on. Make sure the pin's nice and warm hold it till it cools. Okay. Now I need to flip the connector over to do the single pin on the other side. It's ground low high. I'm going to clamp that in tightly there. And again, this is hard for me to do in front of the camera for you. It's tough. All right, so I'm going to put the shrink on the low wire and again bend this right into position. Get the other two shrinks out of the way. Bend this right where I want it. Okay, I got that where I want it. Now I'm just going to melt that on to the pin. Nice. Okay, now that I have those three securely soldered, what I'm going to do is slide the shrink down for those three. I do the shrink on each channel as I go. And that makes space for you to wire the next channel. If you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe below. There will be links to some of the tools I used in this video and a link to my Patreon account below. See you next time.